What you guys got another video on how to harden Windows security and stay protected with the built in Windows security inside Windows using App Locker. You will need Group Policy Editor. That means you're going to have to have Windows 11 Pro or Windows 10 Pro and above to use that feature. But before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. You can use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you submit your order, you'll be able to then use PayPal to pay for your purchase and then you will get your key sent to you and you'll be able to activate your version of Windows, just like you see on the screen here. Anyway, with that said, let's move on to the tutorial. What we're going to do here is we're going to go into the search and type GP edit to open up the group policy editor. Now the group policy editor is a very powerful tool and also the app locker built into a group policy editor is a very powerful tool as well. We're going to show you some of the basic things that you can do with uh, app locker here inside computer configuration, Windows settings, drop that arrow down and go to security settings. Once you get into security settings, drop this down and you will then see down the bottom here uh, application control policies inside here you will see app locker if we drop that down you'll see executable rules windows installation rules also security rules and package app rules as well it's not turned on at the moment but if you want to turn it on you can do it's pretty straightforward all we're going to do here first is we're going to clear all the previous policies that were set on this system here and we're going to go into app locker here and what i'm going to do is basically right click on this and go to properties first. So let's go to properties and this will open up the app locker properties. Now you're going to see inside the enforcement area is broken down into four sections, executable rules, also windows installation rules, and also script rules. And also we have packaged app rules as well. Now, if you go to the advanced tab here, you've got the DLL rules as well, which you can add in here. And once you've done these, you'll have enforce rules and audit only. Now it's advisable if you're setting up a, a system to put it onto audit only. And this way you can monitor the system to see if there's going to be any sort of issues and whether everything is working okay before you enforce any sort of rules on that system, because you don't want it actually causing any problems with you and you can't run certain applications or anything like that. So make sure you run audit mode first for a while to make sure everything is going okay. So once you've done that, you can check your event viewer for all of the uh, audit mode that you've set. And you can go into this location here where it's in event viewer, applications and services. Inside here, we're going to go to Microsoft, then Windows, and then you should see App Locker right here. And this is where all of the stuff is listed right here. And you can keep a monitor on everything that's happening on the system with your App Locker. Now, if you've got a problem here, you'll see a warning sign I see coming up there. You can address these issues and fix them and resolve them before you start putting these policies into place onto a system where it's going to cause major problems. So once you've got all this worked out, you'll be able to then go back into App Locker and then start your enforcement and then implement your enforcement on that system. So let's go back to App Locker. And what we can do here is we can take a look at configuring this correctly. So let's go back to App Locker here, right click, and what we're going to do is go properties and we're going to turn these audit uh, only to enforce rules because we've now monitored the system and now you can start to enforce the rules and make changes that you need to that system. So we've got everything set up here, but make sure you do all your checks, click OK, and we can now move on to the next section, which is the executable rules. Now you can see there's no rules in place here. So what do we do? We can right click on this and create default rules and this will then go ahead and create default rules for us. You can do this for each individual section here by just right clicking and going to default rules and this will put them in there as you can see here. Now these are pretty basic rules and you can work off of these. Now I would advise if you don't know anything about app locker to probably leave it well alone and leave it to the professionals. There's a lot of stuff in here that can really lock down your system and cause major problems for you if you don't know what you're doing. But if you look here, let me just zoom in here. So these rules are allowing everyone and also the admin default rules to allow all files and it says condition path. And you can also see allow files located in the Windows folder and also all files in the program folders as well. So we're going to create a new rule inside the executable rules. Once the window opens, we can click on next and it say, what action do you want to do? 
either allow it or deny it. So we're going to deny here. Everyone is selected and we can also go publisher path or file hash. I'm going to go ahead and do path here and then click next. And now we can choose by browse by files or by folder. So let's go by folder here and we can choose whether it's going to be in program files and we'll choose that and we'll choose Google. And what we're going to do is we're going to block Google just like so and uh, click next and you can give it uh, the added exceptions here if you wanted to. And you can uh, basically set this to publisher or whatever it is you like. I'm going to go next. And again, you can give it a name here if you want to call it whatever you like. I'm going to call it Block Google. It's important to name them because when you start having loads of different uh, policies, you'll be able to recognize them a lot easier when you name them. So I can see it there now. It says deny and it says Block Google. And now I know I could easily find that by having it named. And that's it. You would now block Google. When you click on this, it should say this app has been blocked by your system administrator. And you can run this across all the accounts on that computer. If you had uh, multiple accounts on there, you could block certain things and have it uh, non-blocked for yourself as an administrator if you wanted to. But you can see that's now worked fine. And you can do this with any just about anything you want on this system. And uh, again, you can go in here and make edits to this after the fact if you want to. And you can make some other options. And you can just select here. It says everyone. If I just wanted to select, say, one user account and not block me, at all because I've got it set to everyone I could just put in here the account name that I want to block for instance uh, let's do a standard user because that is an account that I have on here so let me just type standard user because that is an account and we're gonna select check names and click OK and now we are just going to be blocking uh, that standard user uh, for this uh, particular purpose so now when I click on it it's opening and we can now access the accounts because we're not blocked but if I just quickly swap accounts to standard user account over here and I'll quickly switch over to this one here and as soon as I click on anything here like uh, Google you can see it's now been blocked by the administrator and you can use this method to basically block a lot of programs or block downloads on that computer or block access for malware to gain access to certain files if you wanted to lock it down even more that's a more in-depth video. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to make a more in-depth video for you. And again, you can also block installation of programs and things like that, as you can see right here from any folder, whether it will be in the documents folder, or whether it will be straight from the downloads folder. You can basically block it and it will stop it from installing any of these apps like so. So it's a really powerful tool. And again, if malware gets onto the system and you've got this all set up correctly, then what that's going to do is stop malware from uh, running rampant on your system, even including ransomware. But to get that completely locked down, you will need to uh, block a lot of bypasses that could be used by ransomware or malware to infect the system. And you can do that by using things like these here, which someone else has gone to the trouble and actually created. You can create your own as well and save these files so you can roll these out across all of the computers on that network. And using these methods, you can literally stop malware and ransomware from running on that system. And it's very, very effective. But again, you will have to set this up on a case by case uh, sort of scenario because everyone's going to need different requirements and some people don't need uh, that sort of protection. So you just need to make sure that when you're setting it up for yourself, you're going to be uh, setting it up for how you like it and what you need because everyone has different requirements. But you can download these and import these into uh, the App Locker app if you want you to. And I'll quickly show you how to do that so you can see basically what this does. I'm only going to show you how to import one of these, but you could create your own ones as well, which is what I would advise you to do rather than using someone else's. But I'm just showing you this uh, just to save me a bit of time rather than going through and making bunches of changes here. Because you can see this is going to make uh, either 23 changes or 50 changes, depending on what they've. Uh, set up here. So let me quickly uh, open this back up here and I'll quickly go to uh, the app locker here. And what you can do is we can right click on this and we can then import it. So you can see export and import. So if you want to import a policy, you can import them. So I've got this onto my desktop here and we can go ahead and go to that folder in the templates folder here. And you can see there's two of them here. I'm just going to do one of them here. But basically what I'm going to do here is going to say yes here or no, depending on what way you want to go about it. I'm going to reset these and just say yes. So you can see basically what it looks like when they've been implemented on this system. 
click OK here, and that's got 50 odd rules here. And uh, we can see here when we click OK, this is going to uh, put 50 rules onto this system. So let's go ahead and have a look. I'm going to go back into here, and you can see a bunch of them here. And uh, this will stop uh, malware and other uh, types of nasties getting on the system and using these methods to basically run on the system. And you can see it says deny everyone. And again, these are able to uh, create more default ones as well. And what this is going to do is basically lock down your system. It's called Windows Security Hardening. And this is just a layer of security that you're adding to that PC in conjunction with loads of other things that you're going to do on that computer. You could basically lock down the computer so uh, there will be no chance of malware getting onto the system or ransomware getting onto that system if it's set up correctly. And that will take some time. And again, you have to go through and make sure you're closing all the back doors that malware could use to get easily onto that system and run. So rather than having a policy set for uh, using Windows directories and things like that, I would lock that program data down and places like that where malware likes to install itself or temporary folders where it likes to run from. And I would block all those areas and it will stop it from dropping onto the system and being able to uh, install itself. Sometimes, you know, there's things out there that like to use scripts and things like that. So you can block all the script sections on here as well if you have no use for that. So it's important that you go through every single section here and, uh, and, and make sure you lock it down really tight. So you can see here, make sure this is running as well, because otherwise these policies won't work without this running. And it's called this one right here, the application identity. This needs to be running on the system. If this is not running, then your policies will not run. So you need to make sure that's running as well. Other than that, there's a bunch of them that you can go through here. I'm not going to spend a whole time going through this whole section because it will be hours long, and I'm trying to keep this nice and short for you. You've also got the software restrictions area here, which you can use as well, and you've also got the uh, group policy area as well, which you can uh, turn off a lot of Windows settings that you don't need and basically get that system running nice and smooth and have uh, really good protection on it. I'd also be going in there and adding locations for Flash and Java and things like that to make sure that malware or any sort of virus can't use that to run on the system and be able to install itself. Because if you let those run, especially a lot of scripts and things like that, that's how it's going to get on the system and cause havoc. So you need to make sure you lock down a lot of key areas that malware likes to run on. And of course, you would have to know what they are. And this is why this is more an advanced video for people that know how to use this sort of stuff. And uh, again, if you want to see a more in-depth one, then let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to make a more in-depth one on this. It's just whether people are going to watch it. That's the only thing. And uh, if no one watches this sort of video, I'll know that people are not interested in this sort of stuff. Now, sometimes setting these up can be a bit of trial and error. You need to try some of these things out to make sure they're functioning okay. And that's where the audit mode comes in. Now, another good resource for hardening your Windows security is the GitHub here. I'll leave a link in the video description for his website. But basically, once you lock your system down, it should be impossible for the person on that standard user to open up group policy, to take away the settings, or even download stuff that you don't want them to, or block applications and things like that, because they won't have permission uh, to do it because you've locked it down. So let me show you this other site here quickly, which is this fella here who does a pretty good job at offering you the Ultima App Blocker Bypass List. There's a bunch of them inside here. I'll quickly show you where you can download them. And you can download these and test them on your system. You will need to test them because this fella has actually said that these have not tested uh, on every environment. So you will need to do your own testing. But he has left the uh, links for the files up there so you can download them. And they are for the DLL files, uh, executable files, and things like that. They even shows you how to import them. And they're pretty straightforward on how to do it. And I'll quickly show you one of these so you can see. But he's got the full list here for all of these uh, to actually block anything from uh, being used. So you can see here, download these like you're doing here. Obviously do all this at your own risk. Um, you will need to uh, have administrative privileges to run these on a system. And I would definitely not do this on any sort of work network or workstations that you are at work with. You need to check them first. And if you don't know what you're doing with this sort of stuff, then leave it well alone. I'm just going to download these and uh, what we'll do is I'll show you how to quickly import one of these uh, as well. And it will basically create its own list. And then you can basically uh, add 
these alongside the other one so you're not overwriting them every time and that way you have all of this locked down really nice and tight but these should save you a lot of time going in and doing this manually yourself uh, because it's probably took him a long time to get these uh, compiled so he can share them with you guys and uh, they haven't been updated for quite some time uh, five years ago i think was the last time that these have been updated but again uh, they'll probably still be very useful for people that don't want to go through and do all this manually and you can read the article i'll leave the link in the video description for you so you can go through and read it up uh, at your own leisure and basically uh, implement this if you want to i wouldn't do this on your own system i'd be doing this in a virtual environment just to make sure everything works okay so you know it works pretty well and does exactly what you want it to do before you start rolling this out on your own system so what you need to do here is i've cleared all this up for you i started off with a fresh clean uh, one here i'm going to import one of these and i'll show you basically how to do it all you need to do is download them and then navigate to the location here uh, select which one you want to import click ok and it will give you a warning that everything is going to be overwritten and i'm going to just install this on there now obviously if you've installed other ones you don't want to overwrite the ones you've just installed so just so no and it will install them and you would end up with all of these uh, installed on the system as you can see here quite a few of them but you can stop other things like mshta.exe and other things uh, like uh, regedit and also the command prompt you don't want standard users gaining access to those and you certainly wouldn't want malware uh, gaining access to those either and same with scripts and you've also got jsc.exe and a bunch of other stuff there's tons of things that you can block and that's important because you don't want malware exploiting those and using them especially really powerful things that are built into windows uh, you want to definitely block those okay anyway i will leave it right there my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members i appreciate the support have a lovely weekend and i shall catch you in the very next video or i'll see you on the discord server for a chat bye for now <laughs>